Hey guys, Toast here. Today I want to talk about one of the new maps in the They Shall Not Pass DLC, Fort DeVoe. I'm going to discuss some of the positive points that I like about the new map, but also one of the distinct faults that I feel that the map currently has that detracts heavily from the experience. Let's start on a positive note with the things that I feel that the map does particularly well. The first thing that I like about the map is that it's the quintessential anti-sniper map in the game. Now let me preface this by saying that I don't hate snipers or the scout class, I think they both have their place and value, but I also feel like due to the nature of most maps in Battlefield 1, particularly when playing Conquest, the vast majority of maps in the game promote a long-range passive playstyle which rewards those who sit in the back of the map taking pot shots, albeit maybe not quite as much as it rewards players who focus on the objective. Now there are other small maps in the game like Argonne Forest and Suez that are comparable in size to Fort DeVoe, but still offer long, relatively unobstructed lines of sight. While these maps somewhat limit the amount of snipers that you tend to see, they don't necessarily discourage sniping because players still have access to a moderate amount of mid to long range sight lines where the scout weapons will excel over other weapons in the game. Also, just because you're playing the scout class doesn't mean that you're necessarily sniping. If you play the objective, move from point to point, and take an active part in helping your team, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those who sit along the outskirts of the map, devoid of any interest in helping out their team, and really just make themselves a nuisance while trying to get those long-range marksman shots for the entire match. Fort DeVoe is the first map in Battlefield 1 that I feel truly encourages entirely close to mid-range engagements and discourages those trying to sit back. While I don't feel that this is how every map should be in a Battlefield game, in fact, I feel like that would defeat much of the purpose of the series to begin with, I do think it's nice to have one or two maps that offer what Fort DeVoe does. Whether it be Operation Locker in Battlefield 4 or Operation Metro from Battlefield 3 to a lesser extent, which I realize are both very polarizing maps in the community. Another positive thing about Fort DeVoe is that it tends to breed a very action-packed round. Due to the close range nature of the map, the overall size, and the corridor heavy layout, it's rare that you'll find yourself with more than 20 to 30 seconds of not finding an enemy or engagement of some type. Whether that be as part of your team migrating from point to point, which tends to happen fairly frequently on the map with the majority of the team focusing one point at a time, or whether you've chosen to break off from the team and try to flank the enemy. Either way, you aren't likely to go very long without engaging someone. It keeps the round exciting and offers a level of tension that some other maps don't tend to offer. It isn't quite Call of Duty hectic, which is a good thing, but it certainly offers one of the most hectic experiences that you can have in a Battlefield map, especially for Conquest. The final positive thing that I'd like to mention is that the map brings about a new atmosphere that Battlefield 1 has yet to offer. All other maps give you a predominantly outdoor experience where you're going to be subject to any number of air or ground vehicles, infantry coming at you from any possible angle, and various weather conditions. Fort DeVoe, while having a couple of outdoor areas, is primarily an interior map where you get to battle through a crumbling fort through tight corridors and dingy war-torn rooms. While most maps tend to have some interiors for you to explore, it's nice to have a map that offers an almost entirely interior experience, even if only to differentiate the experience from everything else in the game. It gives you an infantry-only fix in a game that focuses heavily on vehicle and infantry mixed gameplay. Now for the one big negative and the thing that I fear may detract heavily from the experience on playing this map. As you may have now noted from the background footage, we have the entire enemy team pinned in their spawn with no chance of getting out. This match remained this way until the end, and to me, this is a problem. The spawn areas for both teams are very narrow, and it's easy for a 32-man front to cover every portion of it, especially if the other team happens to be down a couple people for a portion of the round. Because there are no vehicle spawns on this map, and no behemoth to be received by the losing team, if your team is in a position where you're pushed back into the spawn and the enemy team doesn't want you to get out, you're in for a really poor, and in my opinion, unsporting experience. It would be one thing if this was a rare occurrence, but in only the handful of times I've played this map, this wasn't the only time that this outcome occurred. That to me is a bit worrisome. Another thing to take into consideration is that all of the games I played took place on the CTE. All players on the CTE are premium, and most premium players who've taken the time to install and play on the CTE tend to be Battlefield veterans who are quite familiar with how the game plays. If this outcome can occur with this frequency with primarily players who know what they're doing, imagine if you have a bunch of relatively new Battlefield players or those who don't play the game very frequently. While it's obvious to me that a behemoth isn't the answer to this, as a behemoth on a map of this size with areas so constricted would be devastating, it would occur to me that if no changes are to be made to the map, that another option would be another form of help for the losing team. 
Perhaps they receive a little bit of extra health for the first 30 seconds after spawning for a designated period of time, or perhaps they're given a random temporary secondary spawn point to switch things up a little bit, something that will give them the opportunity to get out of a spawn lock situation. To me, it's incredibly demoralizing to the losing team to be in that position, and it creates an unsporting atmosphere that could somewhat easily be fixed. The gameplay in the background demonstrates just how easy it is to lock the opposing team in the spawn, which happened pretty quickly after the game started. It's not something that I'm particularly proud of having done, it's something I actually commented in the game about how it wasn't fun and felt unfair, but I feel that it is necessary to share this with the community in the hope that DICE may be able to do something about it. Now for those of you who've played on this map so far, what are your thoughts of it? Do you like the map? Have you experienced the same sort of spawn locking situation that I have? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, please leave a like, and if you want to see more content, please subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching, this is Toast, and I'll talk to you soon.